Hello everybody, my name is Zach, aka The Weather Gamer, bringing you week two of WWC recap and week three pickums. I am not alone again this week, I am joined by Shadow. Hello. And hopefully we've got the technical difficulties figured out this time so you can actually hear Shadow this time. Because last time yeah. that was a bit of a mess. And of course I didn't know about it because I didn't hear it until I played back and was uploading. And there was nothing I could do after that. So... Do have a bit of unfortunate business to start off with again. Um, two weeks in a row now. I hope this is not a trend because by the end of the season I'll have replaced three quarters of the coaches. But we did unfortunately lose Spies. Uh, he's just not feeling Mons right now. He's having a rough time with it. He's playing good one week, bad the next week. He just he's not into it right now. So he stepped away. That's fine. But we do have Miggle taking over with the Liverpool Leles. I've known Miggle for a while. Um, met him in the IPA, which you guys have no idea about because that was a league that I was in a long time ago. That was back in the days before I uploaded. Um, so he's joining. Looking forward to it. We'll see where he takes over with here. We're going to get into the power rankings. We had a very, very strange set of power rankings this way. We had a three-way tie for last place between Mama and the West Texas Leafeons, Gearin and the Lafleton Agrons, and Nikki and the Houston High Dragons. All three of them had the same score in our power ranking score system, but it goes by um, differential after that. So the way this turned out is Mama Nish ended up in 16th and last, falling one spot from uh, 15th last week. I don't have my power rankings pulled up. What am I doing here? <laughs> um, I actually had Mama in 14th. So, um, again, it came down to prep for Mama for me. I think her play was a factor as well, but really, I didn't like her prep. Um, Zygarde was her best bet to prevent a Magirna sweep. Um, like, Scarf Thousand Arrows or something was needed. And the Pidgeot set mega pidgeot set just just bothered me being a her defogger was really i didn't like that having tailwind was good but again zygarde would have been great and Pulion being able to live in aura sphere and her not firing off roar really surprised me that would have been great to see because it would have forced the magirna to switch back out or back in and reset up i just i don't know it's prep for me majority of it was prep some of it was play. What do you think, Shadow? Uh, but the interesting thing about this three-way tie is every coach put 216, 115, and 214. So I just need to say that. Yeah. But So for Leafy Arms, I said the early game was pretty confusing. They set up rocks right away and let the, uh, I believe it was Shuckle, set up rocks and webs. Yep. Just to immediately defog them the next turn and then sack their mega pid uh, and then they ended up losing their only mag check which was entei and they just got swept by mag again yeah uh mama just did not prep for that mag correctly and um alteria had them had her in 15th um just again it was the prep um no way to beat gastrodon unless something had toxic alteria wanted to see whimsy come to this game um, Prankster stun score to Magirna's face. Um, but yeah. So, the next in that tie would be Giran and the Lofton Agrons. Um, 0 and 2 minus 8. They also fell one spot from 14th to 15th. I actually had Giran in 16th. Um, honestly, this is just a really, it's a good bulky team, but no hazard removal outside of Hitmonchan rapid spinning just really really kills this team and that's what happened this week he got set up with hazards and then got swept basically because he got chipped down um i think sweeper steela would have helped him here this week he didn't bring toxapex last week he didn't bring um tangrowth those two generally should come as pairs for the most part to keep the regen cycle alive and they can support each other but again hazards are going to be the death of this team and his free agent move doesn't fix this at all so i just it's prep it's play it's the team it's a combination of everything that's taken him down to 16 for me 
Okay, so with me, I feel like it's just him trying to learn his team. Once he learns his team, he'll use it well. But I feel not bringing his full regen port any game yet is really what's holding him back, as well as not knowing how to truly use Steela to its best potential. Yeah, I think once he figures out Steela, it's gonna. Once he figures out Steela, plus his regen core, he said like Steela with the regen core, Steela doesn't have to be defensive, at all, really. Steela could come as a setup sweeper pretty much every week with his regen core. In my PR, I actually uh, said I could help him understand Steela and try and help him with a prep for a couple weeks. Yeah, and I can definitely help with the. Uh the nightmarish regen core because i've experimented with that so garen definitely uh hit us up board also put him in 16th um just basically removal he said removal would have won the game i seriously doubt that but it definitely played a part but you know it's he needs a removal so bad moving on to 14th Actually jumping up two spots from 16th is Nikki and the Houston Hydreigons, 0-2-7. Honest, they bump, he, I bumped Nikki up one spot myself, mainly because Garen played worse than Nikki, but also Nikki did play, he did play you pretty hard there. Like, he didn't go down without swinging. Um, he, he prepped pretty decently. I think it was more his plays were his problem. He also didn't he didn't have anything for your Hydreigon, which basically ran through him. He just it's his play, honestly, that got him this time. And also I don't think his team's complete. He needs a dragon type desperately. He has no dragon type. Having a dragon type that could have taken on Hydreigon would have helped him really really hard and you look at this team with Finny and his lack of firepower for the most part offensively outside of Mimikyu in my mind Halucha would look excellent on this team if he could pick up a decent dragon in Halucha I think his team would be much better balanced and have a better chance at closing some of these close games out now I feel with him it was more prep than play because he brought the HP Water Dark Pulse Thunderous that we were talking about him bringing last week, but instead he brought it this week, which HP Water makes no sense in his machine, and he had no way of touching Hydreigon at all, except for Brick Break and Brick Break on Double Aid and Play Rough on Mimikyu, both get under outsped, so. A lot of these sets were just really confusing in the plays with them. Choice Band Darm was surprising because it was so confusing. Uh, but that's it. And I think Clem had him down low too here. Um, where are you, Clem? Clem actually put him up in 14. A um, few questionable plays towards the end uh, with Dewblade and basically said he's only going up because he thought Mama and Kieran played worse. Coming in here at 13th is Slick and the Cle Cleveland, yeah, Cleveland, Cleveland S Cavaliers. Um, at 0 and 2 minus 5, 13th falling four positions. Just was not. I had him at 12. Um, Mega Camel is getting people. That and Scar, and I don't know why those two are getting people. Mega Camel is. Apparently in Clem's hands very good, but I just don't understand what happened there. Um, I know he's still trying to figure out his team taking this over. He didn't draft it, so I can understand that. But how do you not have something prepped for Skarm? Like, seriously, how does Skarm run up on a team like that? Well, he did bring Zapdos for Skarm, but he ended up staying in with Zapdos on camera up and lost his Zapdos. So then he just got walled by Skarm. Yeah. That was my main issue with him that game. I don't know if Zapdos would have been enough, though, to take down that Skarm. Oh, it's, if it had Roost, it definitely could have 1v1'd it for sure. Depends, because that Skarm was carrying Toxic. And there was no way for a return Toxic, so eventually Clem could have just Toxic stalled it out. But 
Anyways, and I think uh, Altaria had him at 13th. Altaria's been pretty good at um, some of these. Um, Venomoth Sludge. Wait, yeah, because this ha he played Clem, right? So Suicune. Yeah, Suicune. Um, that was crazy. How did they both get to plus four, plus four? And well, because he was trying to call Mind War. Yeah, but had he. Uh, Altaria mentioned earlier, like, or in his, like, should have sludge bomb the turn he bug buzzed instead, and also needed that sludge bomb poison to come sooner, which are both true. Had both of those happen, that uh, Suicune wouldn't have taken down Venno so real easily, in my mind. Um, also, didn't like the plays against Clef. Um, and mentioning that Diggers B is not your Mega Camel switch in. So that's really about it. Whoops. That's going to show up in my recording. Great. All right. So coming in at 12th is myself at 1-1, one one, plus 1, minus 6. Heartbreaking loss. I am one of the biggest droppers this week. I don't honestly agree with being put in 12th. I had myself at, well, I mean, I had myself at 11. No, that's boards I'm looking at. Where did I put myself? Scroll back down. Um, I had myself at 10th. I don't think I should have been below um, Spies, to be honest, but it's whatever. Uh, I didn't prep for Scully, perfectly honest with you. I just, I was so sure Tapu Koko was coming. I was so worried about Tapu Koko coming. I thought I could deal with Scully with Cartana. Cartana takes a crit ice beam to the face. Cartana dies. Scully comes in. Game over. Your insights on that? Oh, I thought I was just disconnected. Okay. Uh, for you and Spies? No, for both me. Both of you didn't prep for him on, or just couldn't prep for him on, and then got beat by it. In Spice's case, it was Volcarona, and him not having anything for Volcarona on his draft in general. But for you, you had answers to Skull of Thieves, you just didn't prep for Skull of Thieves. Yeah, I, it's like playoffs in WWC Season 1. I just didn't prep correctly for Necro. I was so worried about Kafagrigus setting up on me. I was so worried about Tapu Le or not Tapu Le Tapu Coco running through me this match that... I overlooked Scully. Not gonna do that again. And uh, Board actually put me in 11. And mainly just, again, the sheer lack of prep for Scully. He also mentioned that nothing for Incineroar. I did have stuff for Incineroar. It just got chunked way too hard before I could get it in to deal with Incineroar. Glyscore took way too much damage for it to be able to check. Um, uh, to be able to check Incineroar properly. Do you need to go out and play? Is that your problem? Why are you whining? Um, sorry, my dog is in my room crying again. Um, coming in at 11th, taking over for Spies, is Miggle and the Liverpool Leleys. Um, we're not going to talk as if it's Miggle's team. It's still uh, Spies is for this week. I had Spies... actually had Spies at... 11th right behind me um had more to do with the game like the prep was poor volcarona was able to set up and sweep even though he was prepped for it with hp rock and other things um just it really 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 was just volcarona no prep for me um yeah, because the rest of the stuff I talked about is transactions. So, yeah, it was it's just Volker on a setup sweep. Poor prep. That's all I really have on Spies. Yeah, I already gave my words. We can just move on to Dragoon. Yeah, Dragoon. 1-1 one one plus 3, 10th place, falling 6 positions. He got blown back rather surprisingly. I did not expect Dragoon to get blown back by... Damien as hard as he did. He had no checks for Mega Medi and just didn't play right in my mind. Like he won he won the Weather War. He should have won that game, but like if he had energy ball on 
the Rotom switching in with his Chandelure instead of Shadow Balling, he might have been able to kill the Rotom, because that's a set that I've used in the past. If Chandelure gets Energy Ball, which is great, because it can take down some of those Water types or Rock types that want to switch in on it, or Ground types. Um, and this is what I was worried about for the last few weeks watching, and from the draft watching him. I, his team can't function without rain, and when Pelipper went down, he was basically done. Like, Scarf Shandy's not enough to save him. Yeah, I feel like his play that game is really poor against the Gamedi, and so with that, he just kind of lost. Against a team like Damien's, you kind of have to bring Hyper Offense in order to beat his offense, because you don't have a switch in into Mega Medi. So, the only other way of beating Mega Medi is to outspeeding it and kill him. Um, and just kind of put it in both. I mean, there's switches into Mega Medi, you just have to have something with Rocky Helmet that can take two, and then Willow Wisp. Then you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing that can take two on his team. That's true. But uh, somebody's going to have something that can take two from Mega Medi. Um, I think I'm on board here. No. Yeah, I'm on board. Too tough. Yeah, so board actually had Dragon at 10th, nailing it here. Um, just, again, hitting on the Mega Medi. Um, lesson learned, don't think rain will stop Mega Medi blowing you back harder than your 100% accurate Hurricanes. I don't know if that was a jab at Dragoon or not, but that's been the biggest surprise in both of Dragoon's matches. He hasn't brought Torn, uh, Torn T yet, and Torn T would have really helped him in this match. So, has he not brought Torn T Torn T has not come to a game this season. It has sat on the sidelines for two weeks in a row. He's brought rain, but he hasn't brought Torn T. Yeah, that's a question. Man. Yeah, Torn T should be coming every week on this team. Yeah, we're on to Savage, Savage in ninth, moving up four slots. Uh, one and one minus four. Savage had the bounce back game that he needed. I'm going to say this again. Upset special. I am the king of upset specials right now. Upsetting uh, Crimson in the Portland Trail Blazikins. Uh, it was a hacksy game. He did win off of a Stone Edge miss. I'll give I'll give Crimson that. But this was more the type of performance I expect out of Savage on a weekly basis. I had him at nine. Oh, you had him at nine. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had him at six. I had him way higher than everybody else. Um, but he played around the hacks, too. Like, he got poisoned on all three of his mons at the end, and when I first watched the game, I thought, oh, great, he's going to die to Toxic, stalling. Um, team was solid, play was solid. Now it's mainly can he win without the hacks, and I think he can. Savage is a good battler. Yeah, my view on this match, he did get a huge win against a tough opponent. If he had gone 0-2, he would have been much lower. But this hack in this game, really influenced the match. I believe it was a low roll on the Stone Edge against Arachnid, and if he got that, not if he didn't get the low roll, he would have just straight out won right there. At, I think it was fully 5-0 at the time. Yeah. But he did live the hit and kill the Rando T with the Arachnid. So, it was actually he got the biggest threat gone. Yeah, it was actually a combination because it was a low roll on the first stone edge and then it was a miss on the second stone edge. All right. So, and then I think Clem had him at, where'd you go, Clem? Clem had him at 12th. Um, just one, but large part due to the hacks, like the bulk up Bulu. The bulk up Bulu on the fly turn was really good in my mind. That was clutch he lived on a good five percent yeah and uh we are having a little bit of technical difficulties right now i'm gonna try to mitigate those um for those of you that are watching we do have a bit of a blizzard both on my end and shadow's end um so connection may be dropping every now and then um because shadow you really just cut out on that last run oh, all right. 
And I can see I'm at one bar right now with mine. Uh, so, oh, there we go, back to two. So that's something I'll be monitoring here. If shadow cuts out, that's why, and I just messed up the recording because I was trying to flip back to the... I really need a third monitor. Holy cow, I really need a third monitor. Anyways, moving on. Into eighth place, we have Huff and the New York Matangs, one and one, plus zero, so we got back to even. Eighth place, up four slots from last week. Offensive, Life Orb, Seismitoad. Where did that come from? That is legitimately one of those reasons why Huff is in this league, because he does the weirdest things possible and wins with them sometimes. I had him at 13th, Seismitoad being clutch two weeks in a row. I just want to see him win against an upper, one of these upper level teams that we have every week. I want to see him pick up a win versus anybody in the top four. I'll move him up for sure after that but and he moved up this week for me it's just he's playing lower competition I want to see similar to some of these other coaches you take down a big gun you go up Wait, are, am I still here yeah you're still there I got you all right okay everything cut out so my view on this match I really like that offensive size that was a great set supported by the hazard stack. He really noticed the lack of hazard removal on the team, and he took advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, just, he, that Seismitoad really, really makes me want to use Seismitoad one of these days. Um, Alteria had him, where are you? Eight. Um, just talk about his improvement. Garbodor went in with its hazards, and Life Orb, Seismitoad just cleaning up at the end. Yeah, he'll get a chance to get a big win this upcoming week. Who does he play again this week? Is he, oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's you. So if he beats you, I'll definitely move him up. Um, coming in at 7th, we have the other half of the Weather War. Damien is also 1-1 one one plus 0. If these three had tied, this would have been an absolute nightmare to try and figure out who goes in what position. Because they're all one and one plus zero. Um, Damien, for me, I had him at eight. He won the Weather War, which was key. Wait, I probably said Dragoon won the Weather War earlier. Because I don't. Yeah, they did. did Dragoon win the Weather War? Yeah. Damien won the Weather War and he won the match, but Dragoon won the Weather War in the game. Um. Prep, I don't think his prep's all the way there yet. Like, Mega Medi was a beast um, and ripped through uh, the defensive core. Like, it took down Florges and it took down Pharaoh very, very quickly. After seeing those two break through uh, Savage last week, Damien was prepped and took them down. Fire Punch Medi might have been my idea for him, but it definitely was a good bring. Even in rain, it took that thing down. Um, he played. He kept it, the match in his favor the entire time, basically. He kept the sweeper from getting in um, for Dragoon. He made sure that Pelipper died before Swampert could come in and clean. Very good bounce back. Now my question is, can he keep the momentum going and continue to stack some good wins here? And again... I think prep is his biggest issue right now. I really like his play right now. He has control of the whole game when I'm making some quick edits in the dock. I saw him uh, Which dock? His hit in that game was very solid, and I feel if he can keep playing like that, he'll do very well. Yeah. What dock were you fixing? Uh, the upcoming one. Oh, okay. It showed Daw was 1 0. Oh, thank you for catching that. Um, I can't read Board's power ranking because Board wrote it in Dutch. So, Clem. Yeah, I just can ignore that. Yeah, Clem had him in seventh as well, just with Mega Medi having a great matchup and Fire Punch being a solid bring on Pharaoh. Um, just didn't like that it was more. He feel Clem apparently felt it was more his opponent than it was um, his play, but it's whatever. Uh, he did well. That's all I can say. Spare is 1-1 one one plus 0 in 6th. He's one of the biggest movers this week. Up 5. 
Um, he beat Mama Niche. I didn't want to move him that high because really Mama didn't prep for him well. Um, I've got him sitting at third again. I actually didn't move him at all. Um, he did get played really hard by Mama there. She did not go down without a swing, but I don't know. I'm still concerned about what he's going to do. He's missing two key components from his team last year, and I don't think he's quite adjusted to that. Uh, Magirna is showing that it's busted a little bit after showing nothing the last week, but I don't know. I don't know where I sit with Spare yet. I want to see some more matches before I feel confident that he can regain as defending champion. Yeah, I really like how he played in the beginning of this match. He played it how it should be played, and he just brought it in and swept. Yeah, and Board had him in ninth. Um, just this is what a good Magirna looks like, and that's about it because the rest of it's just taking a shot at him. Clem moved up to fifth, um, moving up three slots, two and O plus six. Uh, I, I really need to figure out why I don't like Clem and his team. I, I always consistently put him down lower. Uh, I've got him in seventh, and I mean, if he makes Mega Camel the kill leader at any point this season, I will eat my words because for some reason he's able to do that and make that into a good Mon. I just, I still don't think he's dominated in any of his matches. He hasn't, he sacrificed differential week one, and I don't think he played a clean game this week. Granted, Skarmory walled out at the end, but I just don't, I don't know. I just don't think I'm there for, I'm ready to say Clem is top four worthy yet, or even top it was Six. definitely an improvement from last week. Last week it just threw away differential. This week it was cleaner, but I still don't agree with some play. And it wasn't really dominating. Yeah, I, I need to see a dominating. I need to see Mega Camel 6 0. If I could see a Mega Camel 6 0, I'll I'll definitely jump on the jump on the train there. Um I'll tell you the bronzor for the trick room. Didn't Bronzor pick up a kill this week, too? I it did. Yeah, I so... It did kill the Mega Deancey with Gyro. So that was one more kill than any of us ever thought, which I think is what Altaria said. Um, he also agrees he needs to stop doubting Clem. All of us are doubting Clem, and watch Clem win out the season. Um, Bronzor getting a yeah he mentions Bronzor getting a kill which is more than any of us even expected I never would have thought Bronzor got a kill you know I thought it was just tripping support basically so moving into our top four this week we have Crimson and the Trail Blazikins one and one plus four dropping three spots from the number one I believe I put him at fourth um. He's been the upset back-to-back -back have been his matches. He's helped me so much with getting those uh, upset specials. It, again, like we talked with Savage, it was hacks in the end. Um, and Greninja had a chance to pull it back. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that he misplayed there at the end. He mentioned he misplayed in the match. I still haven't figured out what it was, but because he mentioned it, I've got to assume he misplayed um, with Gren. So Gren could have brought that back potentially for him. Yeah, I feel his team is still really good and broken with his offense. And this Haxi loss does set him back a bit, but it's he's still gonna have a very successful season with that team. I'm really not happy he's in my division. I I don't face him at all. I know you don't because I didn't put you against my division except for torn week one and now i'm stuck with having to play crimson at the end of the season um clem put him in third uh no movement between his two weeks um mainly because it was due to a stone edge miss and doesn't feel he should be penalized for that so uh, moving into third at two and oh plus ten this is the best record in the league right now through two weeks is matthias and the san diego togekiss moving up four slots 
I could not put him one. I know that he got ranked higher. I think I'm the low man on this one. I had him at fifth. He got the dominant win I was asking for. He really did. I asked him to win against top tier talent. He won big, another 5-0, and just dominated against a team that we had in the top four last week. I just want to see one more. I Matthias is an excellent battler. It's going to be a pain when I have to play him. I know it's coming for me. I really doubted his team. He's made some transactions we'll talk about to make his team even more balanced, I think. I just need one more win to put him up there, but he is rocketing up the board right now. Uh, I really liked his play with Volcarona. He found the perfect time to bring it in and set up, and he did it. And then he just swept. He also had very solid switchings for Serp and Nape, which was Spies' main way of beating his team with offense. And I feel this match was really heavily in Matthias' favor, just matchup wise. Yeah, Matthias controlled this match the entire way. Like, he had this thing down. Board put him at second. Um, basically, all Board said was that. Matthias is making all of us look stupid because we've been putting him low um, and not been. It's like Spies' team, old team. I just didn't get Matthias' team, and man, was I wrong. I shouldn't doubt Matthias anymore. Now he's got the transactions with Garchomp, Pyroar. Hey, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. We still got two more power rankings. Oh, oh, oh I thought that was that. <laughs> no, oh, right. you suggested that last okay. week. I suggested um, it's post draft. Yeah, and then I. And he makes the exact transactions. Yeah, and I. Because I followed up after week one and I said, dude, you need to make these changes. And we might be wrong because of what he ended up dropping. Coming in at second is Ga with. I don't know how to pronounce this. The Gaelic. Gaelic. Gardevoirs. I, I think it's Gaelic. Gaelic? Okay, if it's Gaelic, Gardevoirs. Uh. He told me once it was a hard A, and I just, it, I don't know. Anyways, um, very well played. You got Scully in. You played the beginning of the match really, really poorly for me. Um, I I thought I was going to break through there. I had him in second. Um, like, I was, I did the power rankings right after this match, and I was really, really salty, so I kind of got some salt towards him with that but it's great prep i mean he got the 50 50 on my zard like i didn't have to mega evolve he earthquaked got the kill with and that basically ended any chance i had of coming back um it was great prep he exploited my fear of tapu coco and brought scully instead i don't know what else to say he started poorly and then just ran through me yeah, his early game was really bad, but once he got it going, it just kept going and going and going to the point where you couldn't come back. That's the dangers of those speed boosters. Once they start setting, you're you're behind the ball, and then you're done. Yeah, between his first 10 turns and the rest, it was like a completely different person. Yeah, it also helped that he took down my one check for a Scullipede in uh, Cartana. Cartana. Yeah, Cartana was literally the only thing I had that could have stopped that sweep and or not mega evolving when he EQ'd me. But um, Altaria really basically said the th same thing. He played pretty badly around my Umbreon with the synchronized immunity to prankster type of thing. Um, like the Magnet Rise Clefki, I thought that was actually pretty good because it for if um, it had come to Clefki versus Charizard, it would have forced me to Flare Blitz, which. I'm a little hesitant to do with Zard all the time, especially once I lose my Wish Passer, because Zard is just so clutch for me. Um, but yeah, he did a really well job, good job for from Altaria. And of course, not rigged, you ended up in first. I think I even put you in, I did put you in first. Of course it's not rigged. It's not rigged, I people, it's not rigged. Shadow didn't put himself in first, he literally, got tied. No, where was our other tie? Didn't we have another tie this week? Last place. 
It was just last week. It was week. just last place. I was thinking, I'm thinking of last week. Yeah. Um, I posted the scores. I, I just wasn't paying attention. Um, he can, Shadow, you just continue to flex on the WWC. I'm not looking forward to the League War at this point because you're just, you're beating us down and beating us down and beating us down. The only complaint I had in two weeks in, really, it's just your use of Aegislash. Aegislash is just being really not going well. Like, it's got King Shield, and I think it's what, 0-2? Or one and it's two. 0 and 2 right it's now. It's 0 and 2. It hasn't picked up a kill. The main problem yet. is defensively. It kind of got forced into a defensive role both of those games. But that was really my complaint. I know for you, it's awkward to do rankings of yourself. You didn't put yourself first yet. Um, I think it was Matthias. Yeah, so first this week, as I think Matthias did to play better, as my prep and play weren't as good as last week. Yeah. It wasn't insane. Licky Licky sets. Yeah. It was just standard, in my opinion. Yeah. Clem, I mean, Clem had you at one. Board, who has something against you for some reason, put you at three. And, I mean, Altaria had it's you at... because I didn't bring heat. I know, and Altaria had you at three, but he really said his top three were interchangeable, so... But, yeah, that's going to be it. You're the reigning um, leader on the power rankings board for this week. We'll see if you can stay there for next week. So, thank you, Phone, for going off in the middle of the recording. Going into transactions now, the Liverpool Lele. So, as I've said in the past, you get unlimited free agent moves for 24 hours when you take over as a new coach. I want my replacement coaches to feel like they should be able to play. They should make a team that they want. His only change was aromatis for uh, Moltres. I honestly don't know what KFC Bird does. Other than being defog and annoying in general, but uh, half damage to rocks coming in. Aromatisse was a spare wish passer from Spies' team that really wasn't needed. It set Trick Room, but Spies' team wasn't so much a Trick Room team. I don't know. I don't have really much insight on this swap. I really dislike this uh, trade. Because Aromatis was his fairy, and it was a very bulky fairy, and could move fast. With, and it can't be taunted or on court. Is that because it's... I, think it's seeing, I think it's from Sweet Vale. Yeah. But after seeing Clem just stall out the PCF with it, I've seen the potential, and Moltres I haven't seen much of, but dropping Aromatis from Moltres, I'm pretty doubtful. I don't know, we'll see how it uh, plays out for him. Yeah, prove me wrong. Yeah. For the Washington Agrons, I don't think Guren really made any progress here. He dropped Gramble for Comfey. He dropped Hitmonchan for Lantern. Lantern's nice because it can take Bolt Beam okay, but he dropped his Rapid Spinner, and now he's got a Defogger that's not really meant to be a Defogger in Comfey. Like, Hazards are still going to run up on him. He's going to have to bring Comfey every week or Hazards run up on him. I like this trade because Epi Kampe, I really like Kampe as his team lacked a setup sweeper and Kampe can just set up Calm Minds on almost anything that is not a skill type and just start winning with Draining Kiss as it doesn't care about uh, Sticky Web and it can deal with the hazards except for Toxic Spikes even if it has, even if it is Toxic it can still use Heal Bell and get rid of that, but that can be a And Lantern is another Volt Switch Mon, which he does need. And it is also a cleric with Heal Bell. So I, I like this trade. Yeah, I, I still think he needs another hazard removal. Really bad, though. Does more yeah, so we'll see what he does throughout the season. And if we lose more coaches, I'm sure something's going to come loose. I mean, Nikki's still hoarding quite a few of them. Uh, San Diego Togekiss. So these are the transactions that you said. I agreed with them after one week. He dropped Volcarona for Garchomp, Dredigidon for Registeel, and uh, Bastiodon for Pyroar. I almost want to say maybe we made a mistake telling him to drop Volcarona as Volcarona's been on a tear, but Garchomp is 
every bit of good as good and it gives him a drag better dragon he upgraded his steel type so now his fairy steel dragon core is ex can be extremely defensively bulky in sylveon and registeel but also they can run extremely offensive sets so i it's I was gonna say it's a mixed bag for me. I don't know how I feel about these anymore. Well, these were the transactions I told him, or just not didn't tell him, but I recommended in my PR. I said Volcarona for Chomp, Dreadigon for Escavalier slash Registeel, and then Bastion for Purified Fire. Uh, there's still one problem with this draft, which I don't know why he has Delmite and Amoongus, but if he's using it well, I shouldn't question it. I mean, but he's, I do like these things, actually. He's 2 0 plus 10 leading the league, so he's got to know what he's doing. Yeah. So. Is that it for transactions? Was it just those three? Yeah, okay, that was it. So we're going to move into pickums again, rapid fire pickums here. Uh, I need to change tabs here, so I'm looking at the pickums. So uh, we got Miggle and the Lele's versus uh, White Force Weedles and Clem. Who do you got? I went with Clem just because I don't know how Miggle plays. I went with Clem as well. Actually, I think it's a clean, clean sleeve. Sweet. Everyone went with Clem, I think. Yeah, everyone went Clem. Um, I don't remember how Miggle plays either, so I kind of joined you in that boat, and I went with the known commodity. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, Houston Hydreigons versus the Dutch Weavile's. I ended up taking, as did a lot of people, I ended up taking uh, Damien here. I just think Damien Sam is going to be too much for Nikki to handle. I expect it to be a good game. I expect Nikki to fight. He's proven he can fight even with not the greatest prep. He can fight it down and keep his differential okay. But I just think Sand runs through this team. Yeah, until I see him bring good prep I don't see him going anywhere yeah. uh, everybody but the fans picked um, Damien the fans have picked Nikki three weeks in a row I, I don't know why but the fans are in love with Nikki even after two weeks uh, we got uh, Slick and his Escavaliers versus Ga and his Gardevoirs I went ahead and picked Ga no am I looking at the wrong one yeah I was looking at the wrong one I picked Slick. I think this is where Slick gets his bounce back win to start the season. I think he's finally figuring out his team, ready to roll. I think this is where he picks it up. I feel like the way Jaws playing right now, you can if he keeps if he keeps it going and with his prep up from Rosaki, I think he can be Slick. That's true. Rosaki has been very clutch for Godless season building helping him build um yeah it's like a partner team right now it's kind of like Sachi preps and then god finalizes the prep and then makes it offensive plays that's kind of how uh dragoon and ray are doing it ray's building dragoon finishes the play but then they're both in match talking it over so um i think Board went with me on this one, but otherwise everyone, yeah, Board went with me on this one. Every, otherwise, everyone else um, went, including the fans, went with God. Murkos versus myself. I've got nothing to say here. Oh, uh, I went with the Murkos. Uh, he was, he was a matchup. He's got a very good matchup against me. His Bulu Tran. Plus Necro, plus Mega Altaria. It's just incredibly scary for me to have to deal with. Yeah, he has ways of stopping your offense. Yeah, Mega Altaria, if it sets up Cotton Guard and then D dances in my face. I mean, I'm dead when that happens. And that's just the kind of set that I would expect Savage to bring. But unfortunately, none of my taunters are fast enough to do that outside of Torn. And I, I don't know. I don't like torn this match. Um, New York Matangs versus you. I went with you. I just think even though Huff 
Oh, I forgot. With myself, um, it's a clean, clean sweep from the analyst picking um, Savage. The fans went with me. Um, fans keep trying to go for the upset. The fans are trying to... I mean, the fans are 7-9. and nine. They're tied with board. I think they're trying to creep up and catch up to you because you're the next one they can catch. Because we had such an abysmal week of picking last week. I did terrible last week. I went from six and one to eight and six. I mean, board went from five and three to seven and nine. So <laughs> I think you only got two games right last week. I got two, but since I have my game, oh yeah, you did. I only got two. Yeah, that's right. You did only get two. Um, yeah, I just think you, no matter what Huff tries to throw at you, you're gonna have it figured out. And it's nothing against Huff, but I think you, uh, I think you keep it rolling this week. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's a clean sweep except for Board. I think Board might just be trying to catch up at this point, but he went for the upset special. Yeah, Board's going against me as usual. Portland Trail Blaziken, San Diego Togekiss. This is this is a very strange match for me. I was really torn. I ended up going with Matthias just because I think Matthias has got the team to beat this nightmarish offense. I think he'll play very well against Lando and with Greninja. I just especially with Garchomp now, I just oh, I don't it can, this one's gonna go e one either way. It could go either way and I I don't know. I went with Crimson just because of Protein Grin and the rest of his team. His team is just so good. I don't see how Matthias can handle it. Yep. Unless he can get some nice momentum early on and just take control of the whole match. Yep, and this one was split across the board as well. Um, you and Board picked Crimson. Three of us picked... Um, Matthias and I actually had to, in order to make the fan pick, I had to look at our picks because the fans were 6-6 six, six even. And so the fans ended up with Matthias because three of us had picked Matthias. But that this game is going to be very interesting. West Texas Leafions versus the Agrons. Uh, I went with, where is my power ranking here? I did these in the wrong order. I got to fix that next week. Um, I went with Guren. I think Guren gets the win out of this. He's going to bring the bulk. And Mama's not going to have the answer for it. I I don't know. This is another game. It goes either way. It depends on who preps better. I went with Guren just because of matchup. Because he has such a great matchup. I don't see how Mama can win. Depends on what she does with her Zygarde. But... I Unless Jiren leaves Cell Steely in on the one that beats Steely to get week one. Yeah, this. I don't know. This one. That one's gonna get ugly. Finally, we got Dying Dragoons and uh, Spare and the Centrets. This is my upset of the week. I'm going with Dragoon just because I think Dragoon's angry about his loss to Damien. I think he oat preps extremely hard this week. I think the rain ends up shutting down Magirna, and that's basically how you win against Spares. You shut down as Magirna. Yeah, I went with Spare just because his team is still. It's like last. It's like with Crimson. His team is just so good. You've got Mega Latias, Magirna, Landorus, and Victini. I don't know how you stop all that offense plus the rest of his team. It's more like some scissors. I don't know. We'll see. This is my official upset special for the week. We'll see if I can go three for three. Because I'm the only one that picked Dragon. So. Kill leaders. Let me check time real quick. We're at 49 minutes. We should get through this pretty fine. Um, under right, an hour. Than an hour. Yep, that, that was our first goal for those of you at home. We wanted to get under an hour. The next goal is get under 40 minutes. Um... Kill Leader, Skullipi jumping all the way up to first after it's clean 5-0 versus me. A very, very bulky tie here between um, Trailblazer Kim's Lando T, my Gly score, and the free agent Volcarona, which is why there's no logo under it. It is a free agent. Somebody go pick up that Nightmare, preferably not Spare or Crimson, please. Um, Togekiss 
have a tie for fifth with their 4-0 Sylveon with your Mega Gallade, which is also 4-0 plus 4. Then there's a tie for seventh with Terrakion at 4-1, Seismitoad at 4-1, Magearna getting on the board at 4-1 after its sweep. And there it is, Mega Camel is officially on the top 10 in kills at 4-2 plus 2, sitting in 10th. Biggest thing that changed for me and biggest surprise for me, Mega Latios fell off the board. We still don't have Mega Latios on this board, or Mega Mawile, or Protein Greninja isn't even on the board. Karen Black's not on the board, Tapu Koko's not on, like the things you normally expect to be on this board are not there. Seismitoad is sitting in the top 10, as is Mega Camel. Only in this league do I think you would see those two, plus Glyscore still sitting up there, but... I don't know, that's what's really surprising me here with this kill leaderboard. I'm sad my hill go got knocked off. It got to 11th place with those three kills left. Yup, Clement is camel. Gotta, you gotta blame Clement as camel. I mean, like seriously, there are a lot of mods I, I never would have expected to be up here. Track expected. Lando I expected. Magirna expected. Outside of that, nothing on here really screams, "Hey, I should be on this kill leaderboard." And, like, I actually reached out to Panther, who runs APA. He was surprised by this. So, But that's going to be it for this week's recap. I want to thank Shadow again for joining me um, doing this. Hopefully we can keep this running as a weekly thing with Shadow. I'll try to be here every week. If you can't, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, hopefully we can get Board back. Hopefully we can pick up Clem one session or uh, Alteria. Um, all of their YouTube channels, including Shadows, will be listed down below. Please check those out. Um, why did I just forget how I outro? I forgot how I outro. Wow. Um, anyways, all of the links are in the description down below. Check out the other descriptions beside their, their channels. Um, Twitter, whatever. I don't care. I should probably take my Twitter off of there because I hardly ever use it. Uh, Twitch, if you want to check that out fine i don't know when i'm streaming again but you know that's there discord discord's the easiest way to get connected with shadow myself any of the coaches most of them are either in the ww or in the weather gamer server or you can get to the wwc server while it's still open through the weather gamer server that's definitely the best way if you want to come hang out with us outside of that want to talk to shadow pick his brain or talk to any of the coaches really we can get you connected that way we can get you connected to pcf which is shadows league that sort of thing definitely check that out finally check out griffin feathers um his twitter is linked down there uh great artist makes great logos he's got he's responsible for my logo matthias's logo the layouts that i use all that please go show him some love he's not taking commissions right now but definitely go show him some love with that shadow and i are going to get out of here shadow you got anything to wrap up I'll try to get my match up today. He is halfway there. Okay. I meant, did you have any other comments on the um, this week? No, I got before no. we close. All right. We're going to get out of here. See you guys.